You're listening to the Peach Pit. I'm here with none other than Tyler Wade, the creator of Sad Boys. Uh, thanks for w- welcome to the pit, I should say, <laughs> yeah. since we're out here by the Japanese koi yeah. pond here in Penticton. Uh, and thanks for taking time to talk to me, man. Yeah, no worries. Thank you for having me. So I need to know how you kind of got fell in love with the things that you're passionate about. Like, I like to get people's origin stories. Okay. So like, you got this whole racing side to you, yeah. but you also got the art. Yeah. And so sure. you you found both those things growing up. And how did that all happen? Uh, so kind of growing up, um, the empathy side of me, like that made me want to create sad boys. Um, I grew up around foster care. So my parents have done foster care for as long as I can imagine. So it was inevitable that I wanted to help people that way. Yeah. And then the racing side, uh, when my dad grew up, he was big into street stocks and hit the pass up at the racetrack here. Oh, okay. So he was big into cars. So there's always cars around and stuff like that. And then uh, I kind of wanted to like one up him, so I went to, <laughs> moved to Ontario for six months, and I did uh, racing mechanics out there okay. and race F two thousand cars. Cool. And then uh, yeah, just like have been heavy into building cars, for, like my whole life. So finishing up a build now, then I'm hoping to bring Victoria with me, and then yeah, Sad Boys is something <laughs> else that's like uh, the complete opposite side. Yeah, know? we'll get into that in a second. So. Uh, the racing thing you got into that what about the art side of it like so how did you kind of get how did that kind of capture your imagination yeah so i've always I, I honestly don't know where it came from like my uncle is super creative um as in like he draws and stuff like that my parents they're they don't really draw as much that i've seen um but it was a big outlet for me to draw for my mental health stuff like that so that's kind of like my way of coping with it and then when we lived in Kermis, um I told my parents, I was like, oh, I want, like, I want my room graffitied. Like, that's just what I wanted. So they found this local guy named Jamie who he came and painted the wall. And then after it was all done and everything, he's like, do you want to learn how to do graffiti? I was like, no hell way. yeah, man. I was like, let's do it. So he was kind of my mentor for a couple of years. And then we actually painted here at the art gallery multiple times. And I was just looking at that front wall because they just took it down. Um, but we painted here tons of times. Uh, he had a big wall out in Kermis. And we did... Uh, a bunch of art festivals here, stuff like that. I painted a Boonstock, and then it just kind of like it just kept going. So started with drawing, went to like spray painting, yeah. and then my girlfriend is big into like painting with a brush. Uh-huh. So started doing that, and then she taught me how to do embroidery. And then I was like, I've always wanted to do like a clothing line, so I was like, let's get into that, and just kind of like just kept pushing myself to keep trying new things. So so you've always wanted to do a clothing line. Yeah, yeah. like me and my brother have talked about it since we were like. I don't know, I'd say 10, 10, really? 11, 12, yeah. No way. And then he never really, like, went along with it, but I was like, yeah, let's go, like, I'll do it. Might as well just keep going and doing it. So, <laughs> so I was like, yeah, whatever. So one day, I just kind of started, like, playing around with names, and it actually started when I bought a vinyl cutter. There's a oh, vinyl okay. cutter that popped up on Facebook, so I was like, hell yeah, I'm buying that. So I bought that, taught myself how to use it, and then I wanted to start a brand from that. So I played around with different names for a while and like nothing really with a meaning behind it. I just kind of wanted like to get a brand out there. And then I stumbled upon the name Sad Boys and like everybody asked me, how'd you come up with it? Yeah. I have no idea. I think it came to me in a dream or something. <laughs> and uh, and then my mom gave me the idea to put the name behind it. So SAD stands for Stigmas Around Depression. Mm-hmm. And then we just kind of kept going off that and building it and turned into what it is today. So it was your mom that actually kind of pointed out the, the acronym to you in the yeah. first place? Yeah, okay. 100%. Yeah. That's awesome. Go, yeah. from, go mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My parents are really supportive. And they've always been there for me, so it's really cool. That's great. That's yeah. great. So uh, now that you're tying it all together, do you, uh, like, what, what do you see like kind of in the near future for yourself? Because, I mean, this is a big announcement that everybody knows that you're going to be moving now to the yeah. coast, uh, to the island, right? Yeah. So, Victoria. So working through what you're doing right now into the near future what do you kind of see with sad boys happening uh well my goal so i'm like super spur at the moment but my goal this year was to open a storefront here next right. year but obviously that's not going to happen so um i think i'm going to take the year to kind of get acquainted and meet more people over there and then maybe two years from now I'll get like a storefront out there and like kind of work for myself stuff like that because i still have to work like i work two jobs right now so there's yeah. not a whole lot of income coming in from sad boys but that was definitely Lamborghini. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, someday I want to work for myself, and that's my goal for the next couple of years. Cool. So, yeah. And everything you do, you upcycle, right? Uh, most of the stuff, yes. Um, we, like, so obviously I buy new clothes and we release that, but we have, 
I keep saying we, but it's me. Um, every like couple months or so, I'll go to like Valley Village and I'll find like clothes that are like unique or look really cool, and then I'll upcycle it like that. And then my girlfriend came up with the idea to do an auction every couple months with these upcycled one-off pieces. And I've only done one so far, but we should do another one soon. But yeah, that's where the upcycling comes from. Is there? Uh, so I, I'd still need to kind of get more of the idea of the origins behind this. I mean, I know uh, a lot of people who know you probably know the tragic story yeah. behind everything like that. But a lot of people who might be listening to this probably don't. So mm -hmm. do you want to get into that? Yeah, or? for sure. Like right. my whole, I always tell people like people are always super nice about asking about it. But my life story is pretty much online. It's on my website. Well, you, you um, wear your heart on your sleeve. Yeah, You're right? one of those so, kind of guys. Yeah, so I want to be like that positive role model for yeah. people who are struggling. Absolutely. So um, around age 10, 11, something like that, I started noticing like what seemed like the days were getting longer and kind of like it was a little bit darker than yeah. usual. Um, started like getting these thoughts in my head and it was just like super hard to go through the day. And I didn't think anything about it, uh, anything of it. And like at the same time, it got like really hard to concentrate. So I was like, oh, whatever, it's fine, it'll blow over. A couple years later, um, I get diagnosed with depression. And then, so they put me on a bunch of pills and nothing seemed to help, so I just kind of like dropped it all together. And I got diagnosed with ADHD at the same time. And then um, anxiety a couple years later. So that was like, I don't know, I'd say like 17, 18, got diagnosed with that. Yeah. So that's kind of like where that all came from. And for years and years, I had like, no way of coping with it like I was still trying to figure it out and everything so um, I like I was telling you earlier I'm big into drawing and painting and stuff like that so I use that as an outlet for myself instead of like taking medicine like don't get me wrong some people need medicine and that's completely fine yeah but for me I didn't want to take any medicine I didn't want to do that so drawing was a big outlet for me and um, I was always the class clown so like <laughs> using that as an outlet too and then uh, yeah I kind of like I always say I figured myself out, but still, it's like every day is a struggle. So I figured myself out to some extent to like where I can get through the day, but it's still always there in the back of my mind. So. And when those are such formative years too, when it like it seems to be that's when a lot of mental health issues do come up for people, right? Is when they're going through those, and it's really confusing, uh, especially when you you go to a doctor or a counselor or anything like that, and you're also a uh, angsty teenager you don't want to kind of listen to authority you're not sure if you trust authority at, anymore at that age you have a lot of questions and then they start to say oh well maybe take these drugs or do this or that and it's easy to just rebel against it all which a lot of people do and a lot of some people have problems with not doing the drugs some people are better with doing the drugs and we're not trying to tell anyone what to do or anything yeah. like that but the main i think thing is to ask to be ready to ask for help <laughs> yeah for sure that's the biggest thing for sure and like i still struggle with this myself is asking for help and like if i am struggling i like in the back of my mind i'm like no you don't want to bother them like mm -hmm. they don't they probably have enough on their plate whatever yeah but you got to push yourself to ask people for help and talk to people so my girlfriend's been really supportive about that and she's like she's starting to like read when i'm off she's like are you okay i'm like yeah i'm fine and she's like are you really though and I'm like no <laughs> and then we talk about it but like for the longest time I just didn't talk to anybody and like just kind of quote unquote dealt with it myself mm -hmm. which was not the healthiest way to do it mm -hmm. just like it built up for so long so well and like uh sad boys uh it's focused around mental health in general, but it's kind of more of a focus towards men, yeah, right? Uh, exactly. And I think that's important because, like, it's, it's really bizarre that it's the year 2020 and there is such a stigma around yeah. it. But especially around men, we still find it so hard to let ourselves be vulnerable. Yeah, for sure. And how is that, like, still a thing? Yeah, right? It's <laughs> mind-blowing. But uh, it's honestly, it's, what I found is it's generational, right? Yeah. So... Uh, maybe not your parents, but their parents and their parents were always told, like, man up, be a man, like, don't show emotion, stuff yeah. like that. So it's kind of gone down through generations and it's gotten to this point. But, um, like, the millennials and Gen Zs and Gen Y, they're all kind of like, we're this change. So we're kind of like shaping the world now. So there's been so many changes in like the past 10 years yeah 15 years something like that that it's becoming more normalized to talk about it which is really yeah. cool yeah and i was thinking about this in the car actually uh like on the way here like so much there's so much weird stuff that's normalized nowadays and there's so much stuff that should be normalized that isn't yeah so like for instance i have lots of friends who are heavy into drinking like i don't drink very much 
um, but they're heavy into drinking it, so they'll get blackout like every weekend, and that's just oh, normal, man. right? Like it's normal for them and normal for some people, but that's not normal. That's like yeah, that is alcoholism, right? Yeah, it so, is. And, and like everybody and their friends think it's normal, but yeah. it's not. <laughs> no, and, and you could say the same thing with like diet. You know, like mm-hmm. the junk food that we shovel into our bodies and right. just act like oh, it's a normal everyday. Everybody does yeah. this, right? Well, and uh, I'm not saying like we should shame people for having bad habits, mm-hmm. but like definitely it's a. Uh, uh, an awakening that people are all coming into on their own. And it's great to see people like yourself trumpeting it because not enough people are trumpeting it, yeah, especially right. at a time like right now when we all need to really focus on our own mental health and everything like that because that's going to help your immune system and everything, yeah, right? So sure. uh, what was it like when you first started to get noticed around town? What was that kind of like? Were people <laughs> like, hey, sad boy? Yeah, it's weird. Like, me and my girlfriend talk about this all the time, but like, um, like day to day, like, I just go to work and go home now, but on my days off, I'll be, like, out and around town, and everyone's like, oh, like, hey, how's it going? They, like, talk to me, and, like, I've, my memory is so bad, I, like, don't remember who these people are, but, uh, it's really cool, like, being noticed is cool. It's, like, I don't know if that sounds, like, egotistical or not, but it's cool, like, knowing a lot of people, like, just walking around, and people are like, oh, Tyler, or you're sad boys, or whatever, like, even... Um, I was picking up food the other day, and some guy's like, "Oh shit! I heard you on the radio the other day." I was like, "Yeah, that's me." <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's yeah, great. it's cool. It is really cool. But yeah. cool. But at the same time, it is cool because like I've strived for this for so many years, and like I always felt like I was kind of like not an outcast, but like not front line if that's the thing. Like not a popular person. Mm-hmm. So becoming more and more popular is really cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, two, with this uh, being uh, kind of focused around men, like this is, uh, there's a whole racing team behind this, right? There's like cars and people uh, bringing this idea to, for the first time into the shop, yeah. you know, like that's a very ma- masculine, toxic <laughs> kind of like place. Everybody's like, oh, cars yeah. and tough. And was it kind of really bizarre to bring this to people or were people really uh, accepting? I would say, like, we haven't really pushed too far into the racing aspect of it. Like, I want to buy my own car and race and stuff like that. But I I would assume it would be really hard, and I'm, I guess I'll find out. But, like, at the same time, uh, working at Area 27, like, I met a lot of really cool people there. And I'll use my buddy Jerry as an example. Like, he's, like, this... He's a, he's a super great guy. He drives, a, like, a super old-school IROC, and it's, like, a player's edition, one of, like, 76 ever made. Um, but he's, like... You look at him and he's like just an everyday average guy and then he's like he approached me one day he's like hey i want stickers for my car and he's like i really like i like what you're doing so he's like you want to throw sad boy stickers on there i was like <laughs> i was like dude you want me to put like sad boy stickers on your club car like <laughs> what <laughs> he's like yeah absolutely i was like yes absolutely i'm so down <laughs> but uh yeah like I w- i'm gonna assume that most motorsports people are super appreciative of it and uh I'm sure I'll find out that people use racing as an outlet too. Yeah. So. Well, that's what I think a lot of people don't talk about it, but a lot of people that are into racing and, and extreme things such as that, like we, we've all lost someone, yeah. you know, we've been through things like that and whether or not we're ready to talk about it, it's good to see that somebody is Yeah. because it'll make it easier for us when we're ready to finally sure. too, right? And then coming back to being that role model, like my parents always give me, give me crap for this because I always downplay like everything I do I'm just like yeah I make clothes like I go to work I drive cars but they're like no you're a race car driver you're a pure support worker you have your own clothing line that you started from nothing you have all this equipment that you bought from like nothing they're like you have your own shop with your dad you build all these cars and like you know all these people I'm like yeah it's it's all right I guess it could be better but (laughs) yeah yeah it is like I do a lot of cool stuff but it's just like realizing that yeah, well, because you're just doing it one day at a time, yeah. one step at a time, and then you finally realize all the stuff you've actually accomplished so mm-hmm. far. Well, man, just keep doing it, yeah. and I, I hope that this goes really far for you. Thank you. One thing I really like to ask people is just any advice you'd like to give to somebody who's trying to achieve their <laughs> dreams? Uh, just do it. Like That's super easy to say, but push yourself. Um, and my main thing in life is never get too comfortable, so that's why I'm moving to the island where I know like nobody. Um, never get too comfortable. Like constantly push yourself um people are always going to tell you that you can't do something but screw them do it do it anyways even if you fail that's like the first step of being good at something yeah so like if you do something and fail try it again change something try it again and 
it's like that easy. Just keep doing it. You can do it. Absolutely. Cool. And like, this is super cliche, but I like really look up to Elon Musk because he was like, um, when he started his company, so many people were telling him like, just quit. And it was like all these big people that he looked up to. And there's videos of this where they're like, quit. You're never going to do it. Um, what you're doing has been tried before and like it didn't work. But now he's one of the richest men in the world, right? Like, yeah. he built this company. He just sent people to space. <laughs> like, it's crazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, follow your dreams. Do it. I'm a big believer. So, believe in yourself. You got a tattoo it on me. <laughs> yeah. He literally does, everybody. He's got ink in his arm. <laughs> yeah. Is there uh, anything else you want to let our listeners know? Um, follow me on Instagram. Yeah. That's about it. But, yeah, I don't know. Keep doing it. Uh, if you're in Victoria... Hit me off and we'll go for a drink or something when I move down there. Let's link up. I'm down to meet new people. All right. You've been listening to The Peach Bit. I was here with Tyler Wade from Sad Boys. Thanks for talking to me, Tyler. Yeah, not a problem. Thank you for having me. Take care.